Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's live stream. This is uh, this is a a fun uh, a fun one we decided to put together. It was actually Jacqueline's idea, because Hello, because the kids. Oh, I got to turn my computer off there. The, it was your idea. You wanted to do a live stream. There we go. Okay, there we go. That was... Uh, so, we do not need to listen to ourselves that, that in was, stereo. That was wonky. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, so now i got to close all these things out. But anyway, everybody... It, it, tonight was Jacqueline's idea because you know that we had the uh, the kids are the kids are um, are out at um, at what what do we call it kids, kids night out kids night out kids night out at the YMCA mm -hmm. so and Jacqueline was like uh, hey let's do let's do a live stream it's been a while since we've done a live stream together and I was like you know what it's Father's Day we can we can do that it gives us a chance to even talk about your dad a little bit. You know how awesome he was, and, yeah. And uh, everyone here on the channel has been so kind and um, saying wonderful things about your dad, and so yeah, I, feel, I thought it was, you know, I thought it'd be good. So we got Gary. Gary Penna just joined us. So Gary's our Delta, our Delta pilot friend, always giving us the juicy scoop in the Delta airline world. We pick planes based on what he tells us to. Totally, we totally do. Uh, Dustin uh, Stober in the house how's it going dustin how you doing so tell us uh what you were sipping tonight uh where are you sipping it you know where are you watching this from uh gedra is in the house um let's uh i like that let's let's get this going chaps yeah i like yeah. that i like, I like yeah. that I like chaps yeah chaps so how are you how are you feeling right now going into this tasting you um, um well i haven't had any bourbon in 48 hours so you had some last night nope you didn't have any last night nope wow that's a streak for you <laughs> oh sometimes i get to look uh so where are you where where is everybody from where is everyone sipping from so uh, uh gary's saying he's in uh queens right now um sounds like he's stuck in an airport or about to be stuck in an airport or something like that. That sounds sounds lovely. It sounds absolutely lovely. Mm. So, what we have here to sip today, we have the uh, the Rabbit Hole. This is a uh, a 16 year cash drink finished in French oak. I just saw the price on this, nine hundred dollars. Not for this size, surely. No, seven fifty. Uh, seven fifty. But nine hundred dollars for uh for a seven fifty. Nine hundred. That is a lot. That's a that's a lot of money. Uh, Sam saying Sam uh, Schaefer is in St. Louis, saying he had some of their uh, distiller releases last night. High gold, high gold is very good. I like that one a lot. Uh, Wayne Taylor's coming in to us from Ocean City, Maryland. That sounds like a fun place. Yeah. I want to, you know, uh, tell me what's your favorite uh, recipe for uh, clam chowder? No, no, it's Maryland's not clam chowder. Maryland is the uh, crab cakes. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite uh, favorite uh, crab cake recipe? Matthew is from uh, a town I used to live in. Milwaukee. Good, good old Milwaukee. All Wisconsin. right. Oh, Andrew Stotts is from Zanesville, Ohio. Um, in one of my books, Whiskey Women, there was a, I, I tracked a bootlegger, a female bootlegger, a pilot who, Ooh. who, uh, got away from the cops in Zanesville, Ohio. So I've always been curious to track, uh, track that person down. It's quite, uh, uh, quite crazy. Uh, Earl's in Covington, Kentucky. That's a good old Northern Kentucky. Right you know, down the street. Also known as Cincinnati area. Tim uh, Tim Cornay's coming in from the great state of Michigan. Uh, actually, one of the things I wanted you to taste is I'm not going to taste it because well, why not? Um, well, I got to drive in a bit, you know, so I'm trying to reduce my. You do? Well, I got to pick the kids up. We can walk and pick them up. Okay. Maybe. Well, assuming well, you'll still be able to walk after this, I'm just okay. I'll uh, pull back on that one a little bit. Uh, but no, this is from Michigan. 
It's the uh, it's what won our best. It's what won best whiskey in the Ascots. You can see our two little Ooh. Ascots here. These guys right here. This, this was the weeded. This is the wheat whiskey. Uh -huh. Wheat. Wheat whiskey, not wheated bourbon. That's right. Wheat right. whiskey is different. So I'll go ahead and pour you this. This is a uh, hundred and thirty-two proof. Well, this is a, this is a single barrel. Uh, what uh, what one was not a single barrel? It was uh, it was a a batch, but um, but definitely, you know, a single barrel will be a little bit more you know pronounced uh, for what they're going for versus a batch because. It's a single barrel. Diane's coming in from uh, Kansasville, Wisconsin. Hmm, I never, I, I'm not familiar with that town. All right, she's in for the uh, for the first taste of Journeyman Wheat Whiskey. She's digging it. Oh yeah. She's digging it a lot. I like it a lot. That's got that's got like 27 flavors on a first sip. Yeah. I mean, like without even waiting. That's. Can you believe that this is a this is such a it's such a tiny distillery, in the grand scheme of um of all the all the distillers out there, and this beat like everybody, it's unbelievable, great great whiskey, so incredible. Um, let's see, we got Dram Hound in the house saying Happy Father's Day to everybody, Happy Father's Day Eve, um, and all the dads out there for sure, like. This is this is uh, this is a big day, you know, for all of us dads. This is this is a day that hopefully we get to sleep in. Um, we don't have to clean the house. We we get uh, we can do anything we want and get away with anything we want. Basically, like Mother's Day. Well, I mean, because you know, I don't I don't believe in most Mother's Day traditions. So I don't even know what is a Mother's Day tradition. Uh usually it's something horrible like getting the children ready for brunch and like taking them somewhere really crowded. Uh that sounds having awful. to buy it it's it it does. I mean the unlimited mimosa part I guess is good in most of the brunches mm -hmm. that people do, but Okay. I'm I'm in the sleep in and uh get get away from the thing that lets me celebrate being a mother. So, uh, in other words, she wants to be away from the kids. I've done race weekends on Mother's Day weekend, yeah. and yeah, yeah, I love them. Yes, I love them. And this is Mother's Day is a chance for a break. Father's Day is a chance for a uh, radical sleeping in, mm -hmm. uh, getting to eat pretty much whatever you want because mm -hmm. we've got we've got uh, sushi lined up. Ooh, can't wait! Uh, if that's still what you want, if yep. you change your mind tomorrow, then yeah. where are we going to have sushi? By else. the way, uh, where do you want to have sushi? Uh, I feel like we've kind of been losing uh, losing our so our famous sushi holes here in town. So yeah, we're, I we got to think on that one. Well, we'll we'll make it happen. Okay. And then uh, we're having my family's famous sauce for dinner. That's right. Can't wait for that. Mm -hmm. That'll be good. And, you know, we've been, Jacqueline and I have been smoking a lot of cigars together lately. I'm sure there'll be a cigar or two mm -hmm. in the morning. But uh, she had a, she had a uh, Romeo and Juliet dead to this morning. And we had a hard time keeping that thing lit. It, I, It's a me problem. And I, then I, I think you broke the torch. I really do. Like when you put it down, like. I think you busted the uh, the little thing inside. I hope not. I didn't drop it. I mean, like, how do you break a cigar lighter? Which I, I got to be careful talking about cigars on YouTube because they are banning uh, cigar channels right now. You know about that? I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they've been taking an axe to cigar channels and everyone thinks that whiskey is uh, next. I was going to say they're taking yeah. it to... Sm I'm assuming there are no, like, cigarette channels. Well, is there a... <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> like cigarettes are the <laughs> vodka of, uh, of of that world. But so. I mean, are there? I don't even know. Are there pot channels yet? Uh, I think there's some cannabis stuff. Sorry, cannabis. Yeah, yeah. Can um, cannabis is the pardon, proper. Pardon. Me. I was. I call it weed. Weed. Weed's pretty neutral. Marijuana, I've learned, is offensive. It can be offensive to some people. I've heard that. I've yeah. heard that. And unfortunately, it's a lab value. Like it's marijuana. Instead of cannabis, so. yeah, I, 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 cannabis, weed, marijuana. I don't think I, that crowd does not get offended easily. They're like they don't really care. No, so. but this is all about the regulators. So that's that's mm -hmm. where you worry about alcohol being taken down. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so we have uh, what we're going to do today. So I showed you we got the rabbit hole, uh, the latest of their uh, founder's collection here. 16-year-old French oak finish. Uh, we've got Bob Dylan's whiskey, the 10-year-old Heaven's Door. This is a 10-year-old limited edition release. And then what I'm really excited about, this is the this is the sherry finish, 100% malted rye from New Riff. So we're we're essentially we have uh, one rye, um, two barrel finishes, and uh, and two bourbons. So very very excited to uh, to get into this. But you know it's been a while since we've done one of these live streams. I feel like it's been since before Christmas. Yeah. Maybe we should like look at like every time the kids have the uh, the YMCA thing we do we do this. We talk about it and then we never do it. We're like, uh, let's we're go all, to dinner. We're all let's, talk. Yeah. We're all talk. No. No so, live stream. Everything been okay for you lately? You been good? I've been all right. Okay. Uh, everybody asks if I'm a okay and I think okay is probably the best descriptor. Mm -hmm. of how I am on most days, sometimes better than okay, sometimes a little worse. And you recently uh, gifted me uh, a cup. Yes. Um, would you care to share to the public what that cup said? It says, best husband ever. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here. And that, it is a whiskey cup. It, well, well it's, it's or... A, it's a rocks glass. It's a rocks glass. Hey, listen, I'll, I'll drink whiskey out of it. The reality is you're not going to be drinking much anything else out of it. Yeah, the reality is that's I drink whiskey, coffee. It's not and appropriate water. for coffee, and it's too small for the type of water you put down. I do put down a lot of water. I'm a freaking water buffalo, by God. All right, so how do you um, how do you want to go about this? Let, let's um, you know I want to let's pour a little bit more of this journeyman. Here. I I mean I'm I dig it. Okay, let's let's break down this journeyman here together. Now this is a single barrel. Now this is going to end up being on two episodes uh, coming up here on uh, on YouTube. The single barrel? Uh, yeah, this one right here. So I did a I did a uh, box opening, and this was this was in there, and Ooh. then I did uh, this was on a podcast I did with uh, the lead singer of uh, We Came as Romans. So so that one, this little, <laughs> I'm milking this thing for all it's worth. So I mean, let's, really. So let's uh, let's break this thing down. This is the Journeyman. It's a Journeyman single barrel, hundred and thirty thirty two point five yeah. proof. I have no information on it other than that. So, giddy up. It smells like chocolate. I was. It's. It's very. Um, it's very like assorted chocolate mm -hmm. box from a high quality, not a. Not a crap quality. You like chocolates. I do. I like assorted. Mm. Although, you know my favorite box of chocolate, right? The series? The uh, Godiva? I, no, I don't know. Ew. Oh. Russell well, Stover's? Ew, no. Well, not. I mean, I don't mean ew. Russell Stover's is fine. But no, it's the Woodford Reserve. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You knew. You just didn't yeah. remember. Well, so that, yeah, that's like your favorite thing in the world. I, I love, love their uh, salted chocolate caramels. Oh, man. But the, I mean, this this smells like a box of, of assorted chocolate of high quality. It is. This is, uh, this is chocolate in a glass. I mean, it's 132 proof, and it's just hitting my palate like butter, dripping on down the jawline, curling up underneath, chocolate all over. This is so good. I, I mean, I, I got, like, vanilla cream and nuts, and, I mean, it, but it, I, if you told me it was 132 proof, I'd be like, what? No. It's. I'm going to type in what we're tasting here so people can see it. In the meantime... Got any comments? Oh, digging the sports jacket, Fred says Nathan Russell. Oh, thank you, Nathan. Yeah, he's he dressed up for this. I did not. I'm wearing shorts. Oh yeah, he is wearing shorts and dirty uh, sneakers. So hey, there's that. What are you, you going to be talking shit on my sneakers? I mean, 
you know. You put in some steps in those things. You I should did. be proud. I, I got I get 10 10k steps today. So this again, this is the uh, the journeyman uh, single barrel uh, corset whips and whiskey. This is a uh, this is not the product that won best in show. It is the product that won best in show, but what won best in show for the Ascots, these guys, was um, was actually uh, a small batch. So it was not a single barrel. So a single barrel and a small batch are going to be very different. Um, a small batch will have 5, 10, 20 barrels in it, whereas a single barrel will be just that, a single barrel. And typically when someone presents a single barrel, you know, they're like, um, you know, trying to, it, they, we would call it a honey barrel. But in the competition, we don't allow single barrels to go on to play, compete for, for best in the show. I was going to ask that. Do most competitions let single barrels do that? Uh, yeah, so there there have been many a single barrels that won best in show. Mm. And then, um, you know, I just like, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with that because a single barrel is unique i mean it could be the only honey barrel that they have in the um in the field now we have single barrel categories and people can compete in that but they're not going to go on for best in show makes sense okay so i am i mean this is a chocolate butter bomb um you know if i'm going to break it down a little bit more it's going to be some salt water taffy. Quite tasty. Mm, quite tasty. So now let's jump to let's jump to our next one. We're going to jump to the the new riff. I'm gonna type this up here. I guess I should have had these created in advance, huh? Well, this was sort of a last minute thing. It was last minute and and you know what? What are they gonna do? Send me to Iraq. Check box. Right. That's uh so we're looking at um whiskey that was distilled in two thousand fourteen. So and then it, it was pulled out of the barrel in uh two thousand um Let's see. It was pulled out of the barrel in 2021. Um, and then it was, then they added a, a sherry finish. So this is one, this is coming at us at 100, at 100 proof. So they brought this down. But, um, you know, they added sherry barrels. Let's see. It doesn't look like they say if it's Oloroso. Oh. It's Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso. So they have uh, 12 Oloroso casts and three Pedro Jimenez casts. So that's what we're looking at here. And you're not a Sherry fan? Not usually. I'm a big Sherry fan. I mean, um, like straight Sherry, it's like a little too syrupy for me. Yeah. So this is malted rye, 100% uh, malted rye. It's a pretty unique pretty unique um, whiskey offering they're saying uh, someone commented here that uh, the sherry finish is uh, barrel proof uh, the sample I have I don't know if you can see it there maybe zoom in there maybe uh, the sample I have uh, says 100 proof. It's a it, and, it's, and it's six year, uh, six year sherry finish, 100 proof. So the sample I have is 100 proof. I do know there is bar barrel strength that's out there, but what we are tasting here is 100 proof, according to that sample. And I got the nose is really different. It's like uh, it smells like peanut shells to me, kind of peanut shells and like rope, boat rope. You know. Is that an official note? 
I mean, it's not something I call out very often, but you know, you like you remember when we were in Maine, and we got on that like boat, and it was like they had all those ropes. Yeah. And it had like the smell of the sea. So and, I was like, going with sort of not quite musty. That seems that's over the top, but sort of short of yeah, musty. Yeah, it's it's that's in that it's in that vein. Oh, all yeah. right. I mean, I can. I would have asked you if you hadn't have told me that there was sherry in it, if this was mixed with something or like if there was something in there because I feel like that sweet flavor comes out. This feels a lot hotter than 100 proof. So I think that I think the sample bottle might be an error. Let me just take a look here at their not the notes. Yeah, that's not 100 proof. <laughs> so that um, that is not 100 proof, I don't think. Um, I would say that that is much higher. But you definitely do get the sherry. Uh, but you also, I, I, get, I get a lot of, the nuttiness comes from the sherry. You know, there's a lot of sherry nuttiness there. But there's also a lot of, like, dried apricot and orange peel in this. Uh, I like it. I don't. I like it. The nose is off. The nose is off to me, but I like the whiskey. So you don't like it? I mean, it's it's a... I wouldn't refuse to drink it, not like it. Mm -hmm. It's just... it's If I see it on a menu, I'm not going to go, ooh, let's get that. So you are... But your uh, you're, uh, aversion to sherry is also, you know, quite I, a bit. It, and I, like... Like I said, if you hadn't have told me it was sherry, I probably wouldn't have picked up that it was sherry, but I would have said there's something something sweet in here that's bothering me. Okay. Okay. So, kind of like here for me, kind of like middle of the middle of the road for me and thumbs down for Jacqueline. Looks like Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh question came in from Dram Hound, am I coming back to Boston anytime soon? Uh, we actually had we actually had a venue that was wanting to bring me in, but I I put a hold on the um, on the rest of my travel for the year, um, so I've kind of cut back a little bit on like my blind bourbon stuff, but I will be picking back up, you know, probably around September October. And Boston was on that list for the fall, but so you know, cross your fingers, maybe we'll be out there definitely for definitely next year. But we'll be I'll be in Boston at some point, but. We got a big, um, we got a big, I got a couple of big things that I'm working on right now that I'm wanting to put all my attention into. Um, the good news is, is that I, I've made sure, you know, I've got someone coming in and um, we're basically shooting like seven to 10 videos a week. So I will not be, I will not be like neglecting you all. And just doing last minute rando iPhone videos like I had in the past. Uh, so you're, I, I'm at least giving giving the proper attention to you all that you deserve because you know I love me my, I love my YouTube community. They are, they all are special to me. So, but uh, we'll definitely get uh, get back there. And Hank Williams Jr. I'm always in Virginia. I, I'm always in Virginia for this or that and. Uh, um, I, I gotta say, I'm, um, uh, I think it's, they're usually like privates though. They're, I don't think I haven't, I don't think I've done a public thing in a while in Virginia. I don't know. Do you count DC? I don't know. Do you, I, I, I count DC for everything. So let's see if we got any other good questions coming in here. Um, mm hmm mm hmm uh, Mark Fain, is that uh, Journeyman Single Barrel available out of Michigan? Uh, yeah, it's available in Michigan. I think it's in you know it's in a few others. I think it's in other states as well. And uh, I know there are some um, there are some retailers who have been trying to get Journeyman after they won that big award. So well, hopefully it's out in circulation just enough so you can get it. All right, next up is going to be uh bob dylan's heaven's door what's your favorite bob dylan song hurricane yep without a doubt 
I'd say we should have played something, but I'm sure there's a copyright thing with that, isn't there? Oh, good lord, yes. We get we get sued ten times over. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, heavens. Actually, our friend was behind the cell with his copyrights. <gasps> oh. Yeah, John was behind. That. Good for him. Yeah. Sheesh. All right. There we go. Boom. Heaven's Door. You know, I would have thought that would have been a name for like a Guns N' Roses whiskey or bourbon. Because Knocking on Heaven's Door? Yeah. Well, that was Bob Dylan's song. It was? Yeah. It was... Yeah, that was Bob Dylan's song. Yeah, it goes to show how much of a music buff I am. More, I mean, the nasally version, anyway. Right. Yeah, my favorite uh, Bob Dylan song is is the Remember the Hurric you know, Hurricane. Did I ever tell you the story about when I met Reuben Hurricane Carter and I interviewed him? No. So Reuben, Reuben Hurricane Carter was a boxer in the 1960s, you know, one of the best boxers in the world, and he got thrown in jail for murder that he didn't, didn't commit. Didn't do. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bob Dylan was a huge advocate for getting him a release and he wrote this song um you know the hurricane and then it being becoming a movie and and all this well i ended did, up is, he, did he, we watch that movie together i don't think we watched that one that uh -huh. had, that had been your other fred oh in your life um but there was um uh he got released in 96 i interviewed him in college and um, How I, did you get an interview with him in college? I've always been a journalist, and, wow. I'm, and I've always been good. Yeah. I've always been good. I could always get the interview, uh, and I've always been in the right place at the right time. Like the French, oh, the French thing. Oh. You know, I yeah. mean, like I, I've when I want to be when I want to focus on journalism, uh, that is like I always get the story. Like I always know where to go. I know who to talk to. I know how to get it. Um, problem is as you know with journalism like it sucks the big suck and you don't get paid for it right you know and so you can't really earn a living no a you should just be breaking news okay well but i can't break the bank well, so. the, well the other thing is too is like there's not there's not uh um the, the newspapers they're shriveling up right there's like there's like no places for journalists to be anyway i digress uh, we get into, um, uh, I inter I'm interviewing him. I'm in really into it with him. And I asked him the question, like, hey, so, you know, you just got released from prison. What are you doing to make sure that other people, you know, don't get thrown in jail wrongfully like you? And we were in a tight room before he's about to go on stage. It's, it's smaller than this. And... Um, it was the first time that I was thought, oh, shit, I'm about to get a shit kicked out of me. Like, I, I had a lot of, I mean, it's the first time I was afraid of getting oh. the shit kicked out of me. Um, I'd always thought I was tough and got my shit kicked out a lot. But anyway, that's another story. Anyway, so he, like, rears up, you know, his muscles are, like, flexing here out of his shirt. And he's like, what am I doing? What are you doing? And and he just like starts tearing into me. I was like, Oh my god, I didn't mean to offend you, Robert Hurricane Carter. But uh, woo, and he brought it to me. I'll tell you that. Yeah. How old were you? I was nineteen. Wow. 19, good le good 20. lesson. Good yeah. life lesson. Well, you know, but you know, you as journalists, you can get you see it all the time. People push back, and when you when you have the power of the pen, you ask a question. You can be kind of cocky, and I was kind of a cocky shit, so mm. I'm not cocky anymore. All right, so here we go to the uh, Heaven's Door tenure. I forgot we were drinking whiskey at that point. That was... Oof. Smells kind of dirty, like dirt. Really? Like, like dirt and 
and wood. And a pharmacy. It smells... Like a Walgreens pharmacy like a, or yeah. a hospital-based pharmacy? Like a Walgreens pharmacy. All right. Different scents for those things. Yeah, well, well, the hospitals, I typically just smell urine and like... <laughs> You know, that's what I'm saying. Decaying, de decaying flesh. That's another story. When I had, to, when I was doing photography for a private client, they wanted me to photograph like their equipment being. No, it wasn't their equipment. Their students working with a gangrene patient. Oh, for you? Yeah. No. And I had a mask on oh. and all that. I could smell through the mask, and I was like, I was like, it was so rough. Your your nose is so sensitive. I can't. Which, you know, I've always said you would have been a great wound care nurse because yeah. you, you would have been able to be like, no, I don't even need a lab. I, I can smell this from like down the hall. I smell the pustules. It's amazing. Although it's bad when someone farts and they're like three things over or, or you're on a plane and the guy farts. Oh, it's not good. All right. There you go. So this is the latest release of the 10 year of Heaven's Door. Tell you more about it. It is, um, they're calling this the Decades series, a limited series of whiskey that have been aged for a minimum of 10 years. Ooh, I think this one might have been embargoed. Oops. Wait, were we not supposed to do that? It happens sometimes. I tell people, you know, send embargoed stuff with me at, at, at your, at your own, own risk. risk. Yeah. So should we not say what we think? No, you can say what you think. No, it's too late now. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Try not to break any bottles. I'm going to try not to break any bottles. So I, I would say, like, this is... Um, kind of reminds me of, like, cornflakes. Like sugared corn flakes and like uh, frosted flakes. Yeah, frosted flakes. Yeah. I uh, having just recently had frosted flakes deep fried over a piece of chicken. Maybe. You had deep the deep fried frosted flakes or chicken like that was the batter. It was the for batter. The, and where was that? That was at Rec Bar. Rec Bar. Rec Bar. Great bourbon selection there too. And all the games your heart can desire. And if you like tater tots, mm. they know how to do tot hey, shows. I know this whole crowd likes them some taters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what do you thought? What's your thoughts here? You like it? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Okay, that's like, that's like a high five... You know, for this critic over here, I mean, you're rough I, I think the problem is we started with something that I'm like, yeah. And we started with the journeyman. But that's I, also tasting. Like, if if you're doing a tasting, you know, you, you can't and you I can't, know. You can't beat what you just had. Have you been cleansing your palate? I have. This, this is why I don't do this for a living. It's just entertainment for me. Okay. I mean, it's not bad. Okay. It's not great. It's not bad. I would drink this over... Over the new riff? Over the new riff. I will say from all the Heaven's Doors that I've had, this is the best one. Um, this is a, an enormous improvement from the from the past couple, past couple ones I've had. Yeah, so I think this is... If this is the direction they're going in, you know, I, I like to see it. I will say that I'm probably I'm probably a little bit more favorable than Jacqueline on this one. Uh, I I think it's like it just got a lot of kid cereal notes to it, and um, which is not my thing. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I wasn't a big kid cereal. I didn't even like Frosted Flakes. So okay. So we're about to go to the the main whiskey of tonight, and that's the Rabbit Hole uh, sixteen year old. Oh. Uh, but before we do that, if you would be so kind, hit the like button. 
the like button for me on this live stream. Uh, that will help me. Uh, it helps the algorithm and helps people find the live stream tonight. You know, might as well get as many people watching as we, you know, as we can tonight before we all get canceled by YouTube and uh, because the World Health Organization and other other groups are saying that alcohol is bad. Oh, Lordy. It's so bad. Everything is bad under a certain context. Mm -hmm. Well, so. they just have this whole, they just have this whole, uh, there's this whole belief system out there that like, well, alcohol causes cancer, so let's not see any, let not allow the alcohol companies to do any kind of uh Well, let's just whatsoever. all be vegans and take supplements then. Let's just do that. Vegan supplement channel. That's what we are There now. we go. So next up, we're going to be talking about dehydrated moss and how to <laughs> and how to pair that with your soy kombucha. <laughs> that was bad. That was. The, you, so, you were good on the train with the moss, though. So good so. question here um, from uh, from uh, Mike. Thoughts on the latest orphan barrel? I haven't tasted it yet, so I don't have any thoughts. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kevin, do you all live in the Louisville area? Well, yes, we do, Kevin. Our property taxes just went up, and we uh, happily pay those so the roads can continue to be under construction. Continually. And the, and the lanes here always. Uh, are always getting widened, yet somehow continue to be shortened. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> Jeff says, stay with it, Fred. Be strong. Be strong. I love it. I love it. All right, so what else we got here? Oh, power of bourbon wants dad jokes for uh, for Father's Day. I'm not much of a dad's joke guy, you know? You more you're more practical joke, but you uh, like you're yeah. a, you're a real time. I'm I'm a real time uh improv kind of guy. But I will also say that, like, uh, most of my jokes uh, are very R-rated. And so I, I tend to, like, keep those private for as long as I can. Yeah. Yeah. And Although Oscar's working up to some dad there. jokes. Yeah, and but your jokes are equally as... Uh, I can't. Like, I'm. It's kind of surprising you let me out in an open mic situation. <laughs> All right. Okay. So here we go. Let's get to the uh, let's get to the rabbit hole. I'll type that on up in here. So, how much is this retail again? This uh, the SRP on this is nine hundred dollars for um, for a seven fifty, and it's finished in French oak. French oak has nine times the tannic acid as American oak, and you know they selected the um, the oak from two from the two um, two very particular forests. Oh, thank you, Robert. Robert throwing some uh, uh, some uh, super chat love here, Aww. saying he recently joined as a singling and uh, says thank you uh, for the content and the ask out, among many other things. Keep up the great work. Robert, I appreciate that. I got to be honest with you all. You know, I have said it many times, but, you know, this community has helped me through a lot of things personally. You know, the pandemic, you guys were there for me. Um when I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. And, and um, you know, very recently, too, all the kind words that everyone said after Jacqueline's dad passed. Very much appreciated. We've, it, that meant a lot to us. Um, you know, and this community is always there for me. So I really appreciate that, Robert. And I'll keep I'll keep bringing my, my opinions on whiskey and just general. Um, but I have some really cool things coming up. Like, um, you know, in a couple of weeks, I'm... Um, or actually, in a week, in two weeks, um, I'm gonna go shoot a TV pilot. Yeah, can't talk a whole lot about it, but uh, cross your fingers. So here we go. So this is the rabbit hole 16 year. Oh, 
Wow. Oh, Gedra, thank you so much uh, for for that. And and you know, Charles, your dad was a big. Uh, he was a big, big uh, Scotch fan. I can never get him. Um, I can never get him to like bourbon. There was there was one bourbon I could get him to like. And did he like it? He liked it a lot. Yeah. Uh, but he he was always polite, and he's like, nice. Yeah. Yeah. He he was always polite about it, but. He only ever liked Rock Hill Farms. That was the only bourbon I could get him to drink. But what he loved was, uh, from what I brought him, was like Aberfeldy, Glenkitchy. Um, you know, he loved McAllen's, and you know, he was a big Scotch fan. He he liked the peat, but didn't like things over peated. So some of the older, like Lafroy. Yeah, died. He, I, I was surprised because when we took him to Whiskey Fest, mm -hmm. was it Whiskey Fest? Uh, I was Whiskey Whis Live. Whiskey Live. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was certain he was gonna love that, and he was like. It's kind of the same. It's nice, but no. <laughs> he likes some of the Japanese whiskey. I remember that. Yeah. Well, the Japanese whiskey is in that style, mm -hmm. you know, that he likes. He likes he likes sweet, not too smoky, and just sometimes a touch of earth from time to time. Which we got to figure out what scotch we're going to have to celebrate him tomorrow. I think I've been I've been thinking uh, Aberfeldy 21-year-old, yeah. yeah. which we need to go to the store and get. Cause Definitely. I don't think I have any Aberfeldy 21 in a large size. Well, Greg Harris dropping some uh, some love here on the on the super chat, saying uh, momentum. I appreciate that. We're we've got it. I mean, we have setbacks from time to time, but you know, we just we just push. That's all I do. I just go. Okay, so this nose, it's got a lot going on. I'm getting some like almond butter, like um, Nutella even. This is, you know, speaking of like scotches, it kind of comes off like some, some of the honeyer notes that you can get in like a space side. It's got some of that going on. It's spicy. It's tingling the back of my my nose, but... The nose on this rabbit hole 16-year-old is very impressive. Wow. This is your style. Yeah. This is big time your style. Wow. Oh, they only sent me this little bottle. Yeah. Be grateful. Well, actually, they sent me two bottles because the other bottle they sent me um, broke. broke. Yeah, mm -hmm. broke. This is this is pretty brilliant. Uh, it's complicated uh, on the palate, but and in this, the nose. I think. Yeah, in the nose, but the spices on this, it's like. Um, if you're a hot sauce fanatic like I am, I love hot sauce. I mean, this has got range. I mean, it's got um, it's got that sweet spice to it. It's got ghost pepper spice. I mean, it's got crazy kind of uh, flavor profile from a spice perspective. And the one thing that I pull out here, the prominent spice, like a cayenne. Um, it's a beautiful cayenne note, but there's a lot of other spices going on. But the most prominent one for me is cayenne. I feel like this is a, this would be nice. Like you, you mentioned cayenne and I'm mm -hmm. like, this would be nice with chili in the winter as a pairing so we're about to make uh so we we have these blackberry and raspberry bushes and we make hand pies uh with the berries but this reminds me of our of like the hand pies we make really yeah the crust you know the crust the 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 berries mm. 
Um, I, I want to call this out. You know, Jeff Hodges says uh, he lost his mom in February, mm. and she liked uh, rum and coke with a twist of lime. A Cuban, a Cuban Libre. Libre. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, you know, give a little toast to Jeff's mom. Absolutely. It's your mom, Jeff. Yeah, this is not going to make it long in my house. Or your office. Yeah, or my <laughs> office, yeah. This is so good. I'm curious how they filtered it, too. It's dark. Yeah. I, I mean, mean it looks like syrup. Take a look at that. Like, let's put that in comparison to the, you know. All right. Any notes you want to call out? Not really. No. I think you uh, you covered all the notes as the SME here. Spice. Berries and like uh, pie crust. Like cayenne a, was the, the other one. That's the one. The cayenne. The cayenne spice is that's the most prominent thing. But there's like, there's like a nutty honey kind of flavor in there as well. I really like. It's not a marzipan, you know, which is almonds and nut, an almond and nut paste. Um, it's, um, you know, I don't know, maybe a walnut, oh. a walnut dripping with honey. That could be it. But I would say, if I were to be uber critical of this one, I would say that the nose and the palate just rocked my world but the finish did not have equal level of those two even still it still finishes amazing but like i was i was ready to put this in like a category of like top 25 bourbons i've ever tasted kind of thing if that finish would have just kind of kept going it's going to be on that list for me in my head but it it didn't and so it went from like you know elite you know, back down to just kind of great. Uh, so I, I would say that would be the only thing is like the finish is not as strong as the nose and the palate. Um, but I would say mm, this is so good. Power of Bourbon says, I know you like it, Fred, but would you recommend one rabbit hole over two barrel gold labels? Um... Well, first of all, I mean, I'm just breaking down the whiskey here. We can have an economics discussion. It's nine hundred dollars. Uh you know. Yeah. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Um, and I and I would say like you know, and I think I think the, I think the the point of power of bourbon is two barrel gold labels would equal nine hundred dollars or something like that. That's their, that's their high level. Um, release and you know to that point i would say um i would say you know i'd probably go with the two barrels and it's not easy but then again this 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 release doesn't have a lot of bottles to it you that's know? part of the reason for the price yeah. point right yeah. yeah so i mean then again so i don't know yeah. All right, well, yeah, I guess the question is, does it make a difference if you're buying or if you're getting? That's true. Uh, I, I would say I, if I'm getting it, I would want the rabbit rabbit hole. If I'm buying it, I'm probably doing the barrel. And I'd say, too, like, you know, I'm looking at all these auctions and how things are selling for. You know, people are making millions of dollars selling their collections, and mm. I don't know how long that's going to last. Well, but. Mm. You know, but I, I would say that the rabbit hole one probably has a better chance of like accruing value. So just my thought there. We had another super chat come in from Timothy uh, Bernard here. It says, uh, uh, were all the bottles of corset whips and whiskey the same proof? Mine order arrived at 114.4 proof. 
Uh, Timothy, uh, I don't know. They have various batches. You can see the proof of the bottle that won on my Instagram. So just go to my Instagram, scroll down, and you'll find um, you'll find the the picture. Um, you kind of zoom in and see the proof. And people have asked me for the batch number on that as well. And I need to uh, get with the office in Texas to find out what the batch number was uh, because the batch number is on the side of the bottle. And I don't have a picture of the side of the bottle. And I did not do the pouring, so I, I didn't, you know, I don't have access to the bottles. So, um, Dramhound says, uh, could the lack of finish be due to the higher proofs you drank beforehand? Uh, would be for me, but I'm as amateur as they come. Oh, come on now, Dramhound. You're no amateur. Come on now. Don't sell yourself short like that. No, I, I feel like uh, a proof um, a finish is going to finish. Like I've had I've had 100 proof whiskeys that, you know, out finished barrel proof whiskey after I had many a barrel proof whiskey. So I, I, to me, a finish is um, is going to be the same usually um, unless, um, you know, you just drunk. <laughs> that's different well then you're probably not tasting for quality at that that's point. right yeah uh kevin rhodes uh do you have a preferred liquor store in the louisville area yeah i've got a few um there is uh one i'm really good friends with uh chris zabarowski we worked together on the tornado relief fund where you know we raised a lot of money uh for the tornado victims here in western kentucky it's called westport whiskey and wine it's in um it's in the east side of town, but he has great barrel picks. He does a really good job there. And and that is where uh, pre-Julian, Oscar, and I did a, uh, a barrel pick. Or we didn't, we didn't do a barrel pick, but uh, we selected a barrel pick for you for a yeah. Father's Day. It was like your, when he was maybe three. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never, I it got was that a Four recorded. Roses, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Four Roses. Mm -hmm. We got that recorded. Um, and, and the other thing, too, is like you there's a lot of good stores here some of them are chains i mean don't be afraid to go into kroger uh take a look at meyer uh believe it or not you can go to target in louisville and find henry mckenna it's it's like you go into target and just like walk in there you know right next to the yoga pants or, or uh, <laughs> oh, uh socks cheese it's and henry mckenna yeah so. so you you can find if you do some work you can find some nice stuff uh you used to be able to find cool things in like Walgreens, but those days are over. Um, let's see. Uh, great tasting room. Reasonably priced, too. Yep, that's right, Gary. Uh, Westport Whiskey and Wine has a great tasting room for sure. All right. Well, I think um, I think the... Um, uh, oh, uh, Keek and Ash says, uh, did you get the sketch I sent you via email? Yes, I did. I meant to reply to that, and then a kid yelled at me, and I had to go off, and I forgot to. But I saw it. Look, he made this really awesome uh, sketch for me from like one of my photos. Oh, uh, I love it. I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you later. But it's really, really cool. Cool. You know, I like that kind of stuff. So yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, sorry, I didn't reply, but I meant to. And Jacqueline cuts me slack. I'll say like, "Oh, I meant to buy you flowers." And that's like usually good enough. <laughs> so like, I mean, it's amazing chemistry we have. I, I can say that I meant to do it and not actually do it. And I get away with it most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we have any other questions here before we kind of wrap things up here. Uh, let me know if you all have any questions. We're about, we're about to, uh, to wrap it up here in, um, in a minute. Uh, Jory's coming to Frankfurt in late July. Have a good tasting bar recommendation in Frankfurt. Uh, the VFW. What? Yeah, the VFW in in Frankfurt has a. Um, but uh, you have to be a veteran to get in, though. Okay. Really? Yeah. They don't fuck around there. I'm sorry. I just you know I've only been to two VFWs and they didn't strike me as tasting room kind of joints. Oh, well, I'm not saying it's the kind of, it's not got barrels everywhere and it's not like, you know, flowing architectural design. No, I, I it's just. A, it's aluminum and, you know, Woodford Double Oak and 15 other things, whatever. But they're they're right across from the KDA. 
Oh. So the KDA gives them all these bottles. So That makes sense yeah. then. Uh, Baba Bourbon. Fred, I am a bourbon guy through and through. I got an early Father's Day present of Glenn Livet, 21-year-old. All hey. right, all right. I tasted it. What is that funky taste <laughs> I am tasting on my palate? Is it just scotch? Uh, you know what? You know, a lot of people have an aversion to scotch. Um, I, let's let's kind of break that down a little bit. Let's, um, you know, Baba Bourbon. Is it is it taking? Is it tasting like? Is it tasting like a band aid? Is that the kind of funk it is? Because people have there's an actual gene that people have when they taste scotch, uh, and the peat that's used to make scotch they taste band aids. It's it's weird. It's weird. Uh, Jeff Hodges, what is your favorite makers? Makers cash strength, but really the makers that should be out. Makers 12-year-old cash strength. Why isn't it out? Because they don't put out age statements, and they don't do it by age. They do it by taste, and be the best damn whiskey that ever came out if they ever just did that. Oh, makers. Yeah, I know, right? Um, oh, Jory is an Air Force vet, so... Um, I think, I think he can get in that VFW. VFW. Hit that VFW. Right on. By the way, thanks for your service, Jory. Appreciate that. And he says, you make me look good. Well, <laughs> that is true. And, you know, we're friends, too. This is, this, is what, this is what we do when there's not a camera around. Well, we do a few other things, you know what I'm saying? Smoking, cigars. Cigars. And cooking and stuff and like things that. yes yeah. stuff and things but um that is going to do it here if you haven't already click the like button give us a subscribe uh just thank you all uh so much for for tuning in um appreciate it appreciate all the kind words that you've given since uh charles is passing and i appreciate everyone just hanging with us tonight it uh for those of you who've uh had a loss uh particularly if it's a father coming on a father's day you know how much those words mean and they meant a lot to fred and they meant a lot to me so thank you yeah really appreciate you all and be safe out there and no licking handrails and vodka sucks oh no it's no hand oh hand oh trash can no Just, licking uh, handrails no licking trash cans I'm, and remember i'm, I'm i am rusty all right, just vodka just sucks. Just vodka sucks. Vodka sucks. We're good. All right, bye. <laughs> bye. There's there's the finish button. You know, I'm working on putting the button, pushing the right buttons. I'm working on it. Did you actually?